Hey, this is Russ. I have yet another bike to show you. Let me show you the Troxus Lynx. Yeah, this is a new one for me. Yeah, Troxus contacted me and asked me if I would be interested in trying out one of their bikes. They have several different models. And the Lynx is their step through 20 inch wheel class three bike. Yeah, this is a pure class three bike. Let me explain the classes real quickly again. Class one would mean you can take your bike 20 miles per hour if you pedal it, there is no throttle. Class two would be 20 miles per hour pedal assisted, plus you get a throttle. Class three means you can go 20 miles per hour with the throttle, but 28 miles an hour if you pedal it. Now, some people look at this and say, well, that would be difficult to pedal to 23, 28 miles per hour. Let me tell you, it's not. <laughs> it is a rear hub motor, okay? And the motor is made by Bafang. Let me see if I can uh, get down in there. You can read Bafang in there. Not sure if you can see it or not, but yeah, it's a Bafang motor. But the interesting thing is, is as you ride this bike, being a cadence sensor, you don't even have to move your legs hardly at all to get to that 28 miles per hour. Now, you all know that I have a replaced knee, very weak leg. <laughs> I can ride this to 28 miles per hour, barely moving my legs. As long as I keep the pedals moving and uh, I'm set up on, say, pedal assist level five, I can get to 28 miles per hour. Let me show you real quickly on the display screen. Um, okay, I didn't make 28 miles per hour. I hit 27.6. <laughs> All right, close enough, right? <laughs> I think if I had I kept going, I probably would hit the 28, no problem. So yeah, this is an interesting bike. Um, they actually have this bike on sale right now for, I, I believe it's like $17.99. It's usually like $21.99, something, something like that, in that range. Um, I'll put a graphic up there if, if I'm wrong. I usually can't remember all the, those the type of details, but it is on sale right now, so. Uh, the, the thing with this bike that I really wanted to try out is I wanted to see if this bike actually had a little bit of pep. And I will tell you, it does. And I kind of had a feeling it would be because of the Bafang motor. And uh, the, the bike itself will do, um, will do uh, 80 Newton meters of torque. So it's got some, some uh, hill climbing ability. We'll do it on the, the hill test to see how good it does. Let me show you some features of the bike here. Now you might notice that I've added the typical things I usually do. I did add this mirror. It does not come with the mirror. I don't think too many bikes come with mirrors, but I like having a mirror. I did add a cell phone mount. This is a BMX style handlebar. Let me go to the front here. And you can see it a little bit better. Yeah, it's a BMX style handlebar. So all I did is I just kind of clamped it down to the bottom here. It does have uh, shifters that are trigger shifters, which is kind of nice. Yeah, so it's a Shimano style shifters. It is a Shimano Altus derailleur in here. Yeah, it's a nice bike. Now the throttle is a left-hand mounted thumb throttle. Okay, let me, let me shut the bike down so I can kind of push on some of these things and not fear that it's gonna go off on me. So it is a thumb throttle on the left side. It is a Tektro hydraulic brake with a bell, yeah. There's the Tektro branding. Yeah, I always like having the bell right here. It's a lot easier, it's just on the left trigger finger. You got front fork suspension. It is metal fenders on here. You got a rather small uh, headlight, but it is there. Of course, you have a tail light as well. Yeah, it is a 20 inch fat tire bike. So you do have the ability to raise the seat post up higher. And I am at the maximum uh, level there's a minimum insertion level you cannot go any higher than this it's got to go to at least this to be safe and um, their saddle is rather cushy but i don't think it's wide enough at least for me <laughs> but uh, you can change that out if you need to the rear rack is included and um, we see this a lot now on a lot of the racks that they have you know the uh, the wood slats and stuff but yeah i prefer to have that um, rather than it being wide open. 
So you got uh, seven gears on this one. Sometimes these things go to eight, but this one goes to seven. So what's my initial impression? <laughs> well, we're gonna take it out on a, a test ride, but initially, um, I will say this, it's got a lot of power. The buffet motor is a little loud though. I can definitely hear it. It, it, it kind of whines a little bit. And this is not the first buffet motor that I've seen do this or heard do this. Um, I've had other bikes that did it as well. The display does have the ability to uh, put on a cable so you can charge your cell phone. It's kind of important because if you use uh, anything with like a map, you know, like a GPS, you're gonna want to keep this thing running for charging so you don't uh, wear out your battery as you're using it. So uh, overall, yeah, I would say it's pretty good. Um, let me make a correction too on the brakes. I think I mentioned hydraulic brake. <laughs> it's my mistake. Um, it is actually um, um, a uh, cable. So it's a mechanical disc brake. I'm sorry about that. It does pull very easy compared to some others. So that's, that's why I kind of mentioned that, but it's not. The mechanical disc brakes are the ones that have the bell. So that immediately we should have told you right there that that was the case. Yeah, overall, it's a, it's a nice bike. 20 amp hour battery gives us a lot of range. So we'll do a range test eventually on the bike, but uh, I just wanted to at least get the, the basics out there for you so you can see it. Uh, comes in various colors. Uh, I chose the gray color because um, I wanted something a little bit uh, different. They do have a red color, it's a little too bright for me. <laughs> so I didn't do that. But uh, yeah, the gray one looks really nice. All right, I think we should go ahead and take this out on the road. What do you think? Yeah, let's give it a try. Okay, let's see how this bike does. Now the pedal assist lever on the back, on the side here, on the left side, is all clustered together. You do have to be a little careful. I mean, they're, they're up and the down right here, if you look on my left hand, it's right here, but the power switch is right here too. So it's very easy to accidentally hit the power switch while riding. So you need to be careful of that. You can turn on and off the headlight with this. And I can tell you that the uh, display screen does have a backlighting. It's actually very bright. Even in the bright sun, I can see this easily. I think when we go through the tunnel area, um, you would definitely see it. But uh, here, you can, you can see it also. It is a monochrome display, but I'm okay with that. I don't need the colors. I just need something bright enough that I can see all the information. So again, your, uh, your throttle is set up to go up to 20 miles per hour and then it kind of cuts off at that point. That makes it a true class three bike. Some of them, you know, they, they tell you it's class three, but then the throttle will also go to 28 miles per hour. And uh, that is not uh, the definition of class three. Class three really should be 28 miles per hour pedal assisted throttle only going to 20 and that's exactly what this uh, Troxxas Lynx does. So if you want to stay by the letter of the law and ride a class 3 bike, this would do it. So I don't know if you can hear it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna gear up a little bit here. Can you guys hear the motor whine? Take off the, the throttle. Here we go again. Yeah. So you can definitely hear the motor on this, this bike. As we know by reputation, the Bafang motors are very strong, and very good. So I don't think you have anything to worry about, but you need to know that uh, people will hear you coming <laughs> on this bike. The tires are, uh, are um, pretty aggressive as well. Well, we'll just uh, wait our turn here. I could go over and lean and push that uh, warning light, but it's only a couple more cars, so it's fine. This guy's gonna let me go. 
All right. All right, let's pedal a little bit here. So I'm on pedal assist level two right now. You can see I'm dropping a little bit. Uh, let's see, assist two, I can do about 13 miles an hour on assist two. You go up to three, it picks up a little bit more here. What am I doing? 15.3, let's go to four. Oh, this thing's starting to take off now. We have someone in front of us, so I can't do. I can't go any further. Give her the bell. Let her know that we're coming. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, the bike rides well. It's got a lot of pep to it. So as you go through the uh, various uh, pedal assist levels, you'll feel it uh, immediately grab and take hold, kind of propelling you forward there. I think for the average ride around here, pedal assist level three and under would probably be best suited. We're, we're doing 15 miles an hour. You know, when we do the hill test, which is coming up, we do that uh, throttle only. And we try to see how far we can go in terms of our miles per hour um, with just the throttle. Now this hill is actually rather difficult for many bikes and uh, you, we will slow down as we get towards the apex of the hill. The best bikes do about 12.3 miles per hour and these are ones with uh, an even larger newton meter rating than this bike. This bike has an 80 newton meter rating so I'm very curious to see how well it handles the hill test so what we do is we stop here at the bridge. And now again, if somebody's there, we, we will have to um, abort. <laughs> All right, here we go. So I'm gonna throttle only now. Now again, the throttle will only go to 20 miles per hour. It will not go any faster than that. Now if this thing was able to do 28 miles per hour on throttle, we wouldn't have a problem. Now we have a person with a dog. I'm gonna hit her with a bell. Hopefully she'll hear it. dropping to 11.8 11.8 that's actually pretty good like I said the top bikes that we've had will do it at 12.3 11.8 is relatively good yeah it's only a half a mile per hour slower than our top bikes and I had a feeling at 80 Newton meters of torque this bike should have no problems going over the hill the question is a matter of, of how fast could it do it like I said, if this would do the 28 miles per hour on the, uh, on the throttle, we probably would have surpassed it because this thing only goes to 20 miles per hour on throttle only and it still was able to give us 11.8. Very strong motor. Bafang is known for very good motors, so I had no doubt that this motor would do it. Now you guys probably wonder why and how I make choices of which bikes I accept. As you know, I don't take every bike that's offered to me. I think I've turned down 64 bikes now. <laughs> I've only accepted, uh, I don't know what, where we're at now, 22, 23 bikes? I don't know how many it was, something like that. So I turn down more than I take. How do I decide which ones to take? Well, I look at a couple of different things. One thing, first off, have I even heard of the brand before? That's, that's one criteria. If, uh, if I've never heard of it before, I, I start really looking really closely at their websites and, and any information I can get on their, their company. And Troxus was one that I, I had noted that, um, yeah, I've noticed the name before. I've seen some reviews of the bike out on the internet. I said, and it looks like it would be rather beefy that it would be able to hold its own. So I said, yeah, I'd like to try it. I want to see what they're able to do. And uh, I will tell you, this bike has uh, has a little bit of pep to it. Yeah, I like it. How you doing? Uh, guy's on a recumbent, manual recumbent bike. It's not electric. All right, we're gonna take this into the forest preserves as we typically do on our rides. We're gonna see how well it does over there.
Yeah, I chose that today to do this test because I figured, you know, it's uh, it's actually a fairly nice day. It, it went a little bit warmer today and then it started to drop in temperature. It's like 70 degrees right now and as you know, that's my ideal temperature for riding. Because um, we've got the sun, we've got a uh, nice breeze hitting me, I'm not sweating. <laughs> that's a key factor right there. Um, so yeah, I said this would be a nice time to do it. Um, this is the afternoon too, which is typically where the hottest type of the time of the day would be. But no, it's actually very nice. All right, we're gonna cross through here first. We're gonna let all the uh, left turning people go. We're gonna get hit by them. Okay, I think we're good. Hop off and hit the uh, crosswalk uh, button. Get ourselves positioned again to go across. Yeah, what time of the day is it? It's 3.11 right now. So yeah, so far the test is doing really well. <laughs> now even though these are mechanical disc brakes, they actually seem to stop fairly well. The Tektro brakes in general are pretty good. All right, here we go. Now, you do have some ghost pedaling going on. It's something that you should be aware of. If you go, especially if you're going faster, you will be ghost pedaling. Ghost pedaling is where you pedal the bike, but you don't really feel much resistance. It's like you're going through the motions of moving your legs, but it's not like you're really doing anything to help it along. But because it is a cadence sensor, even just moving your legs, the, the bike knows that you're trying to, uh, to go forward and it gives you a little boost from the, from, the, uh, from the motor. So depending on how fast you have your pedal assist level set up for, right now I'm on pedal assist level four, and you, get, you hear the motor coming up, I'm, I'm moving the same amount of my, my leg is moving the same amount, but I'm barely doing any effort. I just kind of keep it rotating and it'll go. It's a little too fast for here. I'm gonna drop it down to three. So yeah, there's no real effort for me to have to, to do this pedaling. I'm gonna take the shortcut here again because I'm not sure whether they have finished this or not. They, they've striped it. But this is an older section here. We call it a shortcut because it, you get to the uh, intersection of the road faster through here. So for guys like me who have uh, some physical problems. Uh, my, my knee and my leg isn't really that great. I had a knee replacement done on my left knee. A uh, cadence sensor makes a lot of sense because it's really uh, not hard to use the bike and yet you can still go as fast as everybody else. <laughs> That's really the main purpose why I bought a knee bike in the first place. I wasn't really into it for the exercise. I was in it for the, uh, the movement of my leg really. Kind of keep my legs moving. Yeah, the bike is very smooth. Like I said, though, when you, you, when you go from section to section, it does have a little kick to it. Whereas some bikes have the ability to, uh, you know, kind of smoothly go from one to the other. This one kind of jolts you a little bit if you're not careful. Kind of shows you what kind of power it has. <laughs> I think it's purposely kind of telling you, yeah, we got power behind you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> You can see here the, the backlighting, it really lights up the, uh, the display. All right. Let's cross over here. This is always a difficult crossing. So we will wait our turn.
Now I think if I didn't have an e-bike, I would not have gone across that fast. <laughs> because if I had to pedal that, I probably would have been hit by the car. <laughs> but I knew that I had some power behind here so I could do it. Yeah, it's a nice bike. I say that about all my bikes because again, I handpick these bikes. <laughs> I kind of decide which one I'm gonna accept and which I'm not. I like the BMX handlebars, that's kind of cool. Yeah, so let me, let me tell you this. Uh, my weight currently is about 260 pounds, so I'm a heavy rider. It handles me just fine. Um, I am 5 foot 10 with an inseam of about 30.5 to 31 inches. I will say that uh, the maximum seat post height is probably fine for me at this point. It's, it's a little bit shorter than I prefer. I think if it had another inch or so, it would be better. So I would say even though they may claim a certain uh, height rider could ride this, if you're like me and you prefer a full extension on your uh, pedaling, um, I wouldn't exceed five foot ten for this bike. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, you could you could buy another seat post <laughs> and and, and uh, or uh, you know seat uh, and, and raise that uh, the saddle up a little bit higher if you wanted to. But you know what comes straight from them? I would say uh, five foot ten would be good. Yeah, anything uh, higher than that, uh, unless you don't mind, you know, not having full extension, um, you might need something that's a little bit taller. But again, 20 inch uh, wheel bikes are really kind of made for people of certain height. But I, I, would, I would max it out at 5'10". That would be my choice. I, I don't think the manufacturer states that. But, um, but I believe it's, it's probably best suited for someone like that. Yeah, so what other things would I recommend to do? I, I think I would change out the saddle um, simply because I, I like a wider saddle, something with a little more cush, even more. Thank you. So uh, yeah, I would definitely change out the saddle. That would be one thing I would do. I would definitely add a uh, side view mirror cell phone mount, get a cable for your uh, charging cable for your phone so you can keep that plugged in. And um, yeah, bottle cage, I zip tied that to the rear rack. I've done that to many bikes in the past. It's not unusual. They have, you know, they, they really can't do too much. I guess they could put a, a water bottle cage boss, you know, right on the down tube. Some, some have done that. But this one does not provide it, so uh, yeah, just zip tie it. Zip tying it would be perfectly fine. I mean, you could actually zip tie it even up in front if you wanted to, but I'll well, keep that clean. I just put it in the rear rack, it's just as good. The only thing is that you know, if you're thirsty or something, yeah, I wouldn't recommend reaching back there to get it. I would stop and then take a sip of water. So overall, is it a yay or a nay? Yeah, I'd say it's a yay. It's a good bike. Yeah, especially at the sale price right now. It's like $17.99. That's a decent price for it. It's got a large battery, 20 amp hour battery. You should get some decent range out of it. Display screen has a lot of information. Um, you can toggle through it here. So you see on the bottom here, things will change through. You've got uh, average speed, maximum speed. The time, how long have you been on this bike since you turned it on, uh, your mileage, your trip meter. So yeah, it's got a lot of stuff on there. So what I recommend? Yes, I would recommend. Does a good job. Hey, anyways, if you like this uh, bike, I'll put a uh, affiliate link in the description of the video along with the accessories and the like. It's usually in the description of the videos too. If you use the affiliate link, it gives me a slight commission. I appreciate that. It doesn't cost you any additional thing, but if you use that link first, before you go um, to the website, 
on your own. Click on that link and then place your order. Hey, that helps me out. Anyways, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. I'll talk to you guys next time.